In this segment, we're going to take a look at how to apply a feathered edge to your embroidery objects. And there's a tool for feathered edge found here on the editing toolbar. Now, before we turn that on, what I'm going to do is just simply create a satin line. So I'll place a couple points, create myself a satin stitch line, and we'll zoom in take a good close look at it. So the tool is called Feathered Edge, and if I was to select this satin line and then come down here and turn on Feathered Edge, you'll see right away what it does. It randomizes the stitches along one of the edges of this object in what's known as a Feathered Edge. So that's the on button for Feathered Edge, and you can click it again and it'll turn it off. So it's on or off. But if we were to turn it on and then open up the object properties for this object, you'll see that there's an actual tab for feathering. So within this tab, we have some options. First of all, you can see that it's turned on because of the check mark, and I guess if I wanted to, I could use that to turn it off. So that's another way that you can turn on or off feathering. It's just by coming to the Feathered Edge tab. Now, in this case, we have some settings. First of all, it's either on the right side or the left side. And so if I say OK, you can see here we have it on, well, in this case, the right side's our bottom side and the left side's our top side. Um, but if I go to the feathered edge, I can actually apply it to both sides. So feathered edge, left and right, or in our case, top and bottom. Now this might be another one of those situations where you don't really want to have underlay because it's starting to be a little bit noticeable. Oh, well, we can turn the underlay off with that quick underlay button. So one of the other things about the settings of the feathered edges is, first of all, you have the width, the maximum width of the feathered edge, and then you have the raggedness. Now, I have a pretty small satin column, so maybe what I'll do is just made it a little bit wider. That way we can see where the feathered edges are. So now that we have um, a little bit wider satin column, if I turn on feathered edge, so the maximum width is 3 millimeters. If I make that a larger number, let's just say 5, and you can see that it increases the depth of the feathering. And another setting in here under the feathered edges is for the raggedness. So right now it's set to low, between low and medium. If I turn it up to between medium and medium and high, it'll make it more ragged, sort of less uniform and more sort of sporadic, if that's a better way of saying it. So you have the ability to adjust the um, raggedness and the width of your underlay, or sorry, your feathered edge, and then you can decide whether it's on one side or on both sides or the opposite side. So that's the feathered edge, and I'm just using it on a simple satin line, but you can use feathered edge on any type of object. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and digitize a parallel weave fill, and I'll just do, you know, some funky shape, doesn't really matter. Hit enter, select my shape and choose feathered edge. Now, because my feathered edge is pretty small, you don't really see a lot of that there. And this is where I think having that ability to go in on the feathering and increase the width of it. So if I wanted more of this filled edge to be feathered, I could turn that up to, let's say, eight millimeters of feathering. And you can really see it. And again, this is one of those situations where either turning off the underlay or changing the type of underlay would seem appropriate just so that we don't have underlay stitches showing underneath our, our feathered edge. So that can be a great way to blend two colors together or to finger different colors together to get um, new and interesting looks. So there's many reasons why you would use a feathered edge object in your embroidery designs.